Well, joining me now is Dr John Price, headmaster at Worksop College in Ramby House, which has pupils from as young as two all the way up to 18 years old. Very good evening to you. Good um, evening, So, Anna. most schools back tomorrow, not quite sure when you are, um, and face masks back in classrooms now in England. Did your heart sink or, or are you broadly supportive of that measure? No, broadly supportive of it, yeah. So, we return, we have an inset day tomorrow for the staff, mm -hmm. uh, and then the pupils, actually the boarders, we're at boarding school as well, return tomorrow night, uh, and then the pupils actually come back the day pupils come back on Wednesday and obviously what we have to do is implement the testing process um, so what we've done is have a staggered return so that our exam year groups uh, come in first whilst the sort of lower year groups and middle year groups will be taught remotely and I'm sure most school leaders will have done that as well um, so don't miss out on any sort of learning and lesson time etc uh, and then we stagger that and obviously the lower and middle school coming in the afternoon um, and then you know the plan is and in fact we've kept mask wearing in communal areas all the way through last term we had uh, uh, a, a pretty sizable for the, the size of the school outbreak, um, just literally as the pupils came back in September last uh, last year. And so we immediately put back in place, uh, you know, masks in communal areas uh, and also tried to, you know, we maintained one-way systems, et cetera, to try and mitigate the risk as much as possible. So, uh, and in fact, in the last week of term, again, with quite a high infection rate in this particular area in Bassett Law, we again made sure that we, uh, uh, we encouraged mask wearing in lessons. Although it's far from ideal, Anna, uh, as you can appreciate, is much better to have the children in school. Uh, and as you know, I spoke on Sky News some time ago with Mark Austin about the, the impact of, of isolation on young people and certainly on their, their well-being and their mental health. And so we're desperately keen to have them back in a classroom situation so we can mitigate uh, that risk as much as possible, um, both to their peers, Anna, and also to, to the staff, because that's going to be clearly our probably biggest concern. Yeah, I mean, and lots of children going back are worried about mocks. And, and just in terms of how your students react to the masks, how, how did you find it before? You know, is it something they talk about? Do they moan about it? Or, or do they actually take it in their stride? <laughs> yeah, I think that... I don't think anyone's particularly keen uh, to wear them. And I think from a teacher's point of view as well, it's not easy. Um, you know, particularly, uh, you know, trying to hear some of the quieter pupils. And, and I'm sure, as, as in all schools, we try and be interactive in the classroom, developing those positive relationships between staff and people, so engaging lessons and asking questions etc and sometimes it's very hard to hear uh, through a mask so I don't think anyone's particularly keen but I think they do understand uh, particularly with uh, uh, with you groups that are, as you say are sitting mock examinations or have examinations coming up that it's very important that we protect their time uh, in school albeit that you know they will be able to learn remotely if they did have to isolate but they also uh, and I've spoken to them many times in assembly they understand the fact that we have to protect the whole community uh, and I think every school would pride ourselves pride themselves on the fact that we are a, you know, our communities uh, and making sure that we protect the staff in that community as well. Because obviously, without the staff, we can't deliver. And I'm just not just talking about teaching staff, I'm talking about catering staff, I'm talking about transport drivers, maintenance staff, all those people. You know, we have 240 staff here, uh, you know, at the college and at Ramby House to maintain, obviously, the, uh, the educational provision for the pupils. Yes, and, and certainly my kids' school went through it from just before half term right the way to Christmas. Yeah. Lots of parents got it. It definitely, you know, goes from the school to the community, which I think was debated at the beginning of all of this, wasn't it? But you're more worried right now about teachers getting it in classrooms um, and the danger of how you keep, keep going. Uh, I know you're in the independent sector, but would you merge classes as the recommendation uh, that we heard from the Education Secretary? And, 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 you know, have you worked out how that would all work, given the guidance has only just come out? Yeah, if we had to, we would do, depending on, obviously, the capacity of the, of the classrooms that we've got. We're fortunate that, obviously, being an independent school, we, we pride ourselves on the fact that we've got very small class sizes, so, therefore, uh, it's a little bit easier if we did have to, you know, potentially merge classes in that regard. Um, but, yes, making sure that we, um, you know, we protect the, the staff as much as, pos as possible is, is going to be key now in this uh, next sort of five or six weeks. That's going to be a demand for us, um, you know, making sure that we uh, we have enough staff in to deliver the lessons. And and what we've done in the past, Anna, as well, if needs be uh, you know I've got a fantastically supportive community here not just teaching staff but the support staff who have been more than willing to step in if necessary so if a member of teaching staff has to go home um, and you know fortunately if they're, if they're not too ill they can still teach remotely from home a member of support staff 
if necessary, will go into that classroom to sit with the pupils uh, whilst the, the teacher at home is delivering the lesson. So we have various contingencies to put in place if we need to, uh, because the last thing we want, and in fact, uh, you know, I think just after the, uh, in September of the year before last, I mean, it seems to have gone on forever now, we had, I think, one occasion where we had 25 staff down across both sites because we're on two sites here. And that was incredibly demanding, but at no time did we send home uh, a whole year group. We managed to maintain uh, the teaching within the school, which I was delighted with. Yes, the, the other elements we heard from Nadim Zahawi, testing on site, presumably to make sure that gets done. Yeah. Uh, the reassurance that they have got testing available for schools and colleges. Ventilation to a further 7,000, you know, clean air purifiers, whatever you want to call it, on top of 1,000 uh, already around. Presuming, again, that's just the state sector. Um, yeah. And also 350,000 CO2 monitors. Now, in our school, it was doors and windows open because yeah. it's, a, it's a, you know, younger age ranges. But what, what what have you managed to do? Yeah, so exactly that. So we have doors and windows open. Um, and as I said to you, you know, we've got a one way system. Uh, we're trying to mitigate as much as we can. We don't get any support in terms of uh, uh, any ventilators um, or air filters or, or uh, sorry, CO2 monitors, those sorts of things. Um, but uh, but yes, you know, we're trying to uh, uh, to mitigate as much as we possibly can in terms of the testing. Uh, yes, exactly the same as all other schools. We have a, a, t a test center which we put in place, which again stretches us hugely in terms of staff resourcing because we're not able to have any extra help at all so I have to utilize the staff I currently have here uh, to obviously make sure that uh, the testing takes place so making sure that staff that are not teaching at that particular time if they have a free period are actually involved in the testing process so I use not just teaching staff I use lab technicians we use uh, catering staff anybody that we can to okay. make sure the pupils are properly tested of course they're trained first um, so that we can assure ourselves that they are um, have been tested properly properly uh, before they come into school. Well, Dr John Price, we wish you the very best of luck. It's not easy, especially in the uh, the unvaccinated and the unmasked younger ages, of course. That's the, the difficulty for the, for the primary age sector, isn't it? Really hard work. But um, uh, thank you very much indeed. Joining yeah, it's us a there pleasure. From... We're looking forward to having them all back. We really are, as I'm sure all the schools are. And I, no doubt the children will be delighted to be back. Yes, and the parents please. will be glad to see the back of them. Can I say yeah, that? I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Thank you very much indeed. Good yeah. luck. Thank you, Anna. <laughs>